Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Who getting shot down in the streets? Uh, we are. Who uh, living in the ghettos? Uh, who, on ch who, don't, who on welfare? Uh, so we the ones being oppressed, right? Yeah. So this is why we up here angry, trying to get our people to wake up. Read. Surely oppression make it Call it a read. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. Come on. Surely oppression make it a wise man mad. And the gift destroyeth the hurts. Alright, so Carlos, as you're looking at the pictures, you said we oppress, right? Yes. Hear this scripture. Hear this scripture. Read. Surely oppression. Make up a wise man, man. So should it, should our people be happy about what's going on tomorrow? Should our people be happy in the condition that they in, Carlos? No, what did all. the scripture say? Read it again. Surely oppression make up a wise man, man. So our condition should have us pissed off. We should read it again. Surely oppression. Make up a wise man, man. Oppression is, look at this street corner. Broken bottles, trash everywhere. Look at over at the corner at the liquor store. Our people know where to be found until that liquor store open. We've been out here, we've been out here for a few hours now. Never has our people been on this corner telling our people to change and wake up. But when we get out here to do it, somebody got something to say now. Bring it out. Yeah, Read it again. Surely oppression make up a wise man mad. So of course we mad. We mad because our people getting shut down in the streets. We mad that our persistence out here, baby mamas, Carlos, Carlos, follow me. We mad because this was your land and a so-called white man took it from you right. and never right. gave it back. Read it again. Surely oppression make up a wise man mad. Carlos, we mad that the white man took y'all land, but now want to deport y'all and y'all children. We mad that the white man took y'all land, brought us over here into slavery, told us we was two different people, when we not. When in fact, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the 12 tribes in Israel. Finish the scripture. And the gift destroyeth the hearts. But why, Carlos, why you up here with us, with the prophets, and you're a prophet yourself, man, the rest of our people, mind is being destroyed by the fourth of you lie. The fourth of you lie. Not July, it's you lie. Teach. Let me ask you a question. Did we receive independence? During the 4th of July, did the black and Hispanic man get independence? Nope. Right. What was going on there? Not, uh, my name, brother. What's your name? My name. We were asleep. This what, is this what was going on. You got a camera phone? Take some pictures, man. Take some pictures. We were getting whipped on our backs. We were getting whipped on our backs. Castrated. Whole nine. We were destroyed. Our head, we were destroyed. All right? But I got something for you. Because this is the commandment that Paul told us with the spirit of Christ. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. Because while our people out here 
We want to see our people get out of oppression, but yet we partake in hella days because it ain't a holy day that celebrates our oppression. How can we want to get out of slavery, but we going to celebrate a holiday that commemorates our slavery? That's not the independence for the black man. That's not the independence for the Hispanic man. Read. Read it out. Go first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. So this is a commandment from Christ. Christ put the spirit of Paul to write this commandment up for us. Read. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Read that again. Read it again. Because our people don't understand that. Our people do not understand that. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, soon as the sign go down, here go the number one record in Chicago, Sirens. Read. Wherefore, come out from among them and be you separate. Hey, Carlos, I need you to pay attention. Stay with me. Stay with me. I need you to hear this. Read that again. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. So, Carlos, what is Christ telling us to do? Stay together. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. What is Christ telling us to do when it comes to the white man and these other nations? Exactly. Exactly. Read that again. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. So Christ is commanding us to be ye separate. Be separate from the white man. How can we be separate from these other nations? How, can, how, how do you be separate from somebody else? No, 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 no. Uh, give me uh, Proverbs 3 and 31. Because we got our own ways we need to govern ourselves by. We shouldn't be celebrating for of your life. We shouldn't be celebrating that. So, I finna, I finna, hey Carlos, stay with me, stay with me. Go ahead and read, read what you got, call in and read it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Hey sisters, I know y'all can hear me in this car, brother. I know you can hear us. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Read it again. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. It says, we shall not envy our oppressor and choose none of his ways. Perfect you lie is the way of the oppressor. That is not our Independence Day. We got our own damn Independence Day in the Bible. And we can show you that. Perfect you lie is not our Independence Day. It is our day that further our oppression. And if you, uh, we can show our independence there in the Bible, get that ready for me. Exodus 13 and verse 3. Hey Carlos, I'm going to show you our independence day. You ever heard of the Passover before? That's our independence day. Read it once you're ready. The book, the book of Exodus, chapter 13 and verse 3. Bring it up. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Read it again. And Moses said unto the people. So Carlos, this is our Independence Day. You know how the white man, Independence Day, he got loose from the Britons, whatever. I don't care. Read. This is our Independence Day. Something we should be celebrating. Remember this day in which he came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So when we came out from Egypt, this was long ago. When Moses led us out of Egypt, that was our Independence Day, the Passover. It was a memorial for us, meaning we're supposed to celebrate it every year. We're not supposed to celebrate the white man's Independence Day. Remember, I told you one way we can separate ourselves is choosing none of his ways. This is what you must do. 
go ahead, give me uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 12, because I want to show you how to not keep the oppressor's ways. Oh, yeah. All right? So I want to show you how to do that. Hey, brother, Because you understand you from the tribe of Issachar. You an Israelite. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Read it out. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So, Carlos, God requires for us so we can be separate from the other nations to keep his commandments. Brother, come hear this word, man. Come hear this word. Come hear this word. God requires for us to keep the commandments so we can be separate. Bring it out. So we gonna help you be separate. Give me First Corinthians, you know what I want, 11. I'm gonna give you an eat and it's, the commandments are not hard. Let me show you that real quick. First John uh, five and three, to show you the commandments are not hard. Pay close attention, Carlos. God even tell you that. This is the book of First John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Bring it out. For this is the love of God. Because, Carlos, you love God, right? Yeah. Hey, these people like these fireworks, they think they love God, but they don't. But, it, but it's okay. That's what we out here to do, to show our people how to love God. Bring it out. Because loving God ain't just saying, oh, I love you, God. Oh, let me put $5 in a collection plate. No. Black, Hispanic, and Native American man, the Israelites, this is how you love God. Bring it out. That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Read it again for Carlos. That we what? That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So, Carlos, how do we love God? Exactly, exactly. Right, and it's saying his commandments are not grievous, meaning what? They're not bad, they're, they're easy. Right, they're easy. So let's get you a commandment, right? Because you love God, right? Let's go. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 3. Bring it out. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Read that again. Because I want to explain something to y'all. Because in Chicago, we got a lot of establishments saying that we're equal. And God does not believe in equality. He has order. The children of Israel were set to be above all nations. But within our own nation, we have order. Read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So that's the order. You got most high God, Christ, man, woman, children. Read. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, this honor of his head. Carlos, do you understand what that means? That means All right, read it again. Every man praying or prophesying. So every man praying or prophesying. Do you know what you know what praying is, right? Do you know what prophesying is? All right, let's get that real quick. Let's get it real quick. That's good. Hey, you being honest. Our people don't know that. I didn't know what it was until somebody taught me. Read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10. Bring it out. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou doing that. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So it said, what is the spirit of prophecy, Carlos? What's the spirit of prophecy according to the Bible? Read it again for him. Think about it while you hear it. And I fell at his feet to worship him. No, just the last part. And for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what's the spirit of prophecy? Let me help you out. The spirit, the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the Bible is prophecy. The Bible, when you hear the Bible, that's prophecy. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. So you with me? You know what praying is? You know what prophecy is? Read. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Read. Every man praying 
or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So Carlos, what does that mean? Every man praying and prophesying with his head covered, dishonoreth his head. What does that mean? So let me break it down to you. When you pray, you not so, a man not supposed to have a hat on. When the Bible, when the words of the Bible are coming out, you're not supposed to have your hat on. So you love God, right? And you want it, and his commandments aren't hard to keep, right? So what should you do? All praises, hey. All praises. What, what's that hard, Carlos? Hey, this brother, hey, this brother got a lot more guts than a lot of people, right? He hear the commandments and he apply them quickly. Bring it out. A lot of people don't want to do that. Right. So let's get into something else because I see you got a mask on, but I see you, what you got. It's called a five o'clock shadow. You know what to get me. It's a certain couple. Look, look, Carlos, I, I know you feel like we putting you on the spot, but nah, this is love. This is love. It's, it's interesting to me. It's your history. All praises. All pra and that's what we're here for. Go ahead and read. The book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it up. Okay. I want to touch one thing that's in your hand real quick. Before I touch the beard. What's in your hand? What's that? Passion. Poison. You, you know that. So why do you have it? I, I love it. I, I love it. Nah, bro. You shouldn't love it. Remember, you're supposed to love God. If you love God, what you supposed to do? Keep the commandments, right? Some people don't know that smoking is a sin. Right. I repeat, smoking is a sin. That's right. Cigarettes, weed, crack, Teeth. paper, right. blows, drugs is a sin. That's weed. right. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 16. Come on. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelt up in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. I'm going to have the brother read it again. But what the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American brother and sister need to understand, your body is not yours. It is the most high God's temple. It is not your body. You can't put whatever you want in it. You can't dress however you want. Read it again. Verse 17. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Read it again. If any man defile the temple of God. If any man defile the temple of God. If you want to smoke cigarettes. If you want to smoke weed. If you want to smoke crack. If you want to snort cocaine. If you want to shoot up heroin. Read. Him shall God destroy. God is going to destroy you. God is going to destroy you. That's right. Bring it out. Carlos, you understand that, right? Where that cigarette, where that cigarette go? Let me ask you, because you're supposed to love God. And you took the hat off. And I saw, I seen you show the action that you love God. Where that cigarette go? Nope. You gotta show that you love God, bro. You know. Let, let me give me Romans 6 and 23. Bring it out. You supposed to show that you love God. You said you said it yourself that you love God. And what you did for for the most high God, because you didn't do it for us. You did it for God. You removed his, your hat when the word was coming out. But you refused to toss the cigarette. You don't need that. When you stressed out, you should be able to go to the Bible. Not no cigarette. I know why you smoke cigarettes. We used to smoke cigarettes up here. We used to smoke weed up here. I understand why you do it, but I'm telling you, brother, you don't need that. All you need is this in your brothers. And we here with you. Read. But if you choose otherwise, this is the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 23. Bring it out. For the wages of sin is death. Read it again. For the wages of sin is death. Read it again, Carlos. I need you to listen, man. For the wages of sin is death. 
So because you want to keep that cigarette in your pocket and probably walk off, light it up. Read it again. For the wages of sin is death. Columns. Let's, okay, let's take this situation and tell the story from somebody else. Let's say when you die, right? And you, and you get to give an account of your death. Wouldn't you rather, there you go. Hey, give this man a round of applause. Like I said, hey, this, hey, you got a lot of heart, bro. You got a lot of heart. And a lot of people can't do that. Right, that is, it's God's temple. Brother, come hear this word. Come hear this word, brother. This word is for you. So, you giving an account to somebody on your death, right? And let's say with us up here, maybe we get killed teaching and doing the Lord's work. I can say that, hey, I died because I was serving the Lord. You don't want to say, oh, how, how did you die, brother? Oh, I didn't want to put a cigarette down. We supposed to be men. How is that controlling you? Then what should you do? What should, if it's not controlled, because you're smoking it because you're stressed out, right? Why are you smoking it? Because you like it? Read it again. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Great. For the wages of sin is death. Brother, what's your name if you don't mind me asking? Anthony Harris. Anthony Harris? Yeah. Okay, I'm Yeki L. That's my real name. Okay, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Read it again. For the wages of sin is death. So the wages of sin is death. And you're right. The gift of God is eternal life. That leads. Hold on. You know what to give me, Matthew. You absolutely, you know what, Anthony, you absolutely right. Eternal life is the gift of God. But you, I want to show you how you get eternal life. How do you get eternal life? We're going to read, thus saith the Lord. This out of the Bible. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. We only got a brother that said, pray gets you eternal life. Read. And behold. What came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Call it and read it again, because Anthony, you got a Bible. So open it up and read along with us. Read. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Bring it out. And behold, what came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So the brother asked Christ, What good master? What should I do to get eternal life? There is one, none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So Anthony, how do we get eternal life? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. So let me ask you a question. It's, it didn't hold, say thou shalt not smoke. Read, read it one more time and we're going to get not smoking. Read. And he said unto him, what God is that me God? There is no good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So to get eternal life is keeping the commandments. You said smoking wasn't a sin. After we went over the scripture, let's get it, let's get it. Let's get it, let's get it, because smoking is a sin, read. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Read it again. If any man defiles the temple of God. So let me ask you a question. Can you go into the church and smoke a cigarette? You can. Read it again. It's verse 17. If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Anthony, if any man defiles the temple of God, the only way, the only ways you can do that is by fornication, drugs, overly drinking, cigarettes. You, but you smoke cigarettes, sin, sin, cigarettes, sin. How do you think you get cancer? Sin. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. God is going to destroy you if you keep smoking cigarettes. God is, yes, it's going to give you cancer. We up here trying to show you that because we love you. You said what? 
Yes. Give me that real quick. This is the last scripture. Nobody told you that they love you, No, no. We love you because we're trying to show you the path you should be on. Save your life. We're trying to save your life, brother. We're trying to save your life. You know what I'm saying? So since you don't want to hear that, don't be the brother on this deathbed crying. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8 and verse 11. Read. Because since it's against any evil work, it's not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So let me explain something to you. Because I ain't gonna lie, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they only learn when it's an instant punishment. You can tell them something about to happen and they don't want to listen. But when they get knocked upside the head, when they get shot up, they want to cry, Lord, Lord. That's when they want to learn and say, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, please save me. Read it again. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So because you don't receive that cancer instantaneously, you want to keep smoking cigarettes. Because it didn't happen to you right now. Read. I got news for, news flash for you. Read. Verse 12. Though a sinner do evil in hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with him that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with him, with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days. Anthony, your days are numbered. If you don't want to stop sinning, your days are numbered. And guess what? The worst feeling in the world a man can have is not knowing when death is coming. Knowing death is coming, but not knowing the time. So, bro, you got to put them cigarettes down. Just because you ain't getting cancer instantly, you need to put them cigarettes down. Just because our people ain't being judged on the 4th of July instantly. Just because our people ain't judged on the 4th of July instantly don't mean that it ain't going to happen. Because you best believe tomorrow another 100 people going to get shot. Tomorrow, another one of our people going to get put to death by the police. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.